Chief here. I've decided since my loot crate openings are going to an abrupt end, I think I only got one more and that may be for loot crate fallout. Uh, I've been a dungeon master since 1987. I've had a wonderful time doing it and I greatly, greatly love being a dungeon master. My introduction to D&D was back in 1984 and I had to look it up and I've only found these two kids mentioned in one article and not the article that was the demise of them. There were two boys out in eastern Colorado. I can't remember what city they exactly lived in, but they were out in the plains out east of Denver. And they were uh, Stephen and Dan. I'm not going to give their last name. They were 12 and 15, and they did a murder-suicide. They were playing D&D, &D, and uh, they had a curse put upon them by a devil or a demon. I don't remember exactly what, so... They figured that they left a note saying that that was the only way to break the curse was to kill themselves. Uh, of course, back then, D&D equivalented to demons and devils and whatnot because there was also a bunch of religious people commenting on the tragedy of this incident and the, how this game was worshipping demons and devils and as such. 1985, I joined the military. 1986, I'm at my second AIT, which is in the lovely state of Texas. Exactly, almost in the middle of Texas, where no and where meet, and that is San Angelo, Texas. I was going there to school in the military to be, finally become a soldier and have a job in the military. I uh, had a roommate show up within like a week after I uh, was assigned there, and uh, one Saturday I called him son, he called me dad because of the age difference. <laughs> and he said, Come on, old man. Uh, let's go to the day room. So we went to the day room and they were setting up a D&D &D session with about one dungeon master and maybe about three or four players. It wasn't a very big group. Uh, they started playing and finally the DM, dungeon master looked over at me and he says, do you want to play? I said, sure. So they rolled me up a human ranger because I didn't want to be a fighter and they didn't want to make me a thief because they already had these things. And they've also wanted to introduce me to the game so therefore I could stand back and shoot my arrows into combat and whatever. Within a couple gaming sessions, I was already playing my second character because, guess what, we needed a cleric. I'll take over that. Dungeon Master didn't seem to mind. I had no problem distinguishing between my two characters and what they were doing. And of course I had to borrow player's book to do my spells. And write down my spells and of course had to look them up to exactly what they do so within another game session or two I killed my ranger uh, we were dividing up treasure and I knew that scarabs were an Egyptian bug but being naive to the game I didn't realize that you just go ahead and put magical items on your body so my ranger said I'll take this scarab and put it right on his chest and went straight to his heart and killed him I got a little teary-eyed, and one of the other characters slipped me a note and says, I'll go help you bury your ranger, because we didn't have the funds to resurrect him, and I don't even know if we were anywhere near a city to get him resurrected, because my cleric sure couldn't do it at the time. So I ended up playing my cleric, and I was only there for about six months before I graduated and left. So that was my introduction to playing as a player. I get to my first duty station, which is Berlin, Germany, before the wall fell down. <gasps> there was a wall? Yeah, a lot of people are probably wondering what I'm talking about. Uh, and that's where I met my second wife. Well, part of the baggage with her was she had Dragon Magazines. My introduction to Dragon Magazine. And uh, so couldn't wait to go to the Stars and Stripes at that time of the month, you know, when the Dragon Magazine's supposed to come out. Then after a little while, we finally got this Dungeon Magazine. So I was buying two magazines, and it was lots of fun. Wasn't in a group, didn't hear about any groups, and finally I told the missus, I said, I want to be a Dungeon Master. And she looked at me kind of funny, and she goes, why? I said, I don't mind sitting on that side of the table, but I want to be on this side of the table where I can control everything. Plus, I have a good imagination and everything else, and I can build good storylines. And she said, okay. She found me a group. There was three or four guys that lived in the barracks, and 
she arranged it. I went. It was a Saturday. I remember that much. And it was, I went, had all the materials. I had a basic uh, module, I think, I, out of the Dungeon Magazine, if I'm not mistaken, for beginning level characters. And got there and sat at a table. The guys came in, introduced themselves. I introduced me, myself, and we had a gaming session. Well, these guys taught me several valuable lessons. Number one, be prepared for the unexpected. I'll get to that in a little bit. Number two, never let the player characters know their current experience points. We'll get to that too. And three, play with people that you really know. Seriously. Getting to the first two points, we got done with the module, split up all the experience points, and this is back in the lovely days of second edition. Yes, show and tell here. Second edition. And uh, so the thief is like, hey, I'm only like 23 experience points from uh, going up next level. Can I go outside and outside of town and fight a hill giant? Well, not being prepared, not being an experienced dungeon master, as this was my first session at DMing, uh, yeah, give me a couple minutes, I'll throw something together, and then another guy pipes in. Yeah, I'm only like 15 experience away from going up. This is back in the day when all the classes had different experience point brackets, which I miss. Your thief went up the fastest, and then I think it was the cleric that went up the second fastest. Understandable to the most vital members of the party. So, ran it, they killed a hill giant, they got their experience points, they leveled up. And, like I said, the first two rolls, be prepared for the unexpected. I wasn't prepared for them to say, oh, I'm 23 points shy of going up a level, can I go out and kill something? And second was, don't let them know their experience point level. And third, play with people you know. These guys did not say thank you. These guys did not say, oh, by the way, we want you back. I parted ways. Never, never DM'd again while I was at Berlin. I got home and the wife was livid. She was like, where have you been? I was gone like about six hours. But an hour and a half of that roughly was bus ride and shine riding the U-Bahn and the S-Bahn in Berlin. I said, I've been DMing. She goes, well, I didn't expect you to be gone this long. I said, well, you got to go through the module. Then at that point, she decided she wanted to play. But as I said, I never played anymore while I was at there. So then we get to our second duty station together, or our yeah, second duty station together, which is Fort Riley, Kansas, where I had the largest group ever. I had a core group of about 20 players. Chief, you can't run a group that large. Yes, you can, if you got a good imagination. And plus, I had all the... Forgotten Realms modules and everything else like that. So we were playing in the Forgotten Realms and they kept publishing more and more stuff. But I would have a core group of 10 to 12 players that showed up faithfully almost every Saturday. We would play from 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock Saturday morning to 1 or 2 a.m. Sunday morning. So we were there playing for over... 12, 14 hours. We would take a break for lunch. We would order food. Sometimes we would have potluck and sometimes we would just bring stuff and we would cook. We would have fun. And the soldiers wanted to get away from the barracks. Uh, wonderful group. Uh, before and after the Gulf War. During the Gulf War, somebody else ran it out in the desert. So I, I played a character there. I played a mage. A mage who I called Lysander back at the time, and now I hear that's such a wonderful popular name. I don't know what book it came out of or anything else, but I went through a period of playing the, um, the fantasy games, Fantasy 1, Fantasy 2, and Fantasy 3 on the Commodore 64, and I went through a period of naming all my elves after L. I had Leolan as a ranger. I had Lysander as a as a mage, and I can't remember the rest of the character's name, but all of them were named L. So I have Lysander, now I hear Lysander left and right, and I don't know where it came from in my head. And that's Lysander the mage, and that's the weakest character I ever played too, because he had like a seven or nine strength. So after a couple 
rounds of spell casting. Uh, yeah, I got my staff and I got my dagger to fight with, uh, but my armor class sucks, so I'll just stand back here and twiddle my thumbs. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about all the groups, but like I said, the military groups were the best. I finally became a warrant officer and stuck in Korea for one year. And I was a CW2 at the time, a Chief Warrant Officer 2. And there were a bunch of kids. Everywhere I went, soldiers were kids, but these were kids. Uh, some of them had arrived in Korea and got drunk and stupid. Now the military, even though the local law says that at this age you can drink, you can drink, but when you're underage by U.S. standards and you do something stupid, you're going to get punished. So three or four of these kids had done something stupid when they first got there, drunk and stupid, and they were confined to the base the rest of their tour. So that means one year they're sitting on the base, not unless they got to go somewhere else to go do something at other bases. So I went to my... Uh, uh, officer in charge of my section, who was a major, who played D&D &D himself, and I said, sir, I said, these poor kids want a dungeon master. Can I dungeon master? He says, sure, chief. He says, just keep the kids in, out of, under control and out of trouble. I said, he said, sure, you have my permission, because as an officer, I was not supposed to go into the enlisted barracks, not unless I was on duty conducting an inspection or anything else like that. So that gave me permission to go into the enlisted barracks to run the Dungeon Master because guess what? We had a round table and I had 12, a core of 12 soldiers again. And I'm going to talk about that group because they were a fun group. Uh, of course, by that time we're in the 3.0 and 3.5 maybe, or 3.0, yeah, 3.0. And oh, those were the days. So that's my introduction to Dungeon and Dragons. Like I said, throwing my hat in. I've got stories. I've got stuff to show. Speaking of show and tell, this is my first set of dice. So while I was stuck at San Angelo, I didn't have a car. So that's why Saturdays was nice to play Dungeons and Dragons. So my roommate had a buddy who had a car. So one day, he, or one evening, he said, hey, we're, we're going to go shopping, like to the mall. I think there's like one mall back at the time there. And they had a hobby shop. And they also, and of course, downtown was kind of dead like any other small town because once you build a mall, downtown dies. So bought my first set of dice. It's only the six because back then you didn't get the, uh, the ten of the tens. You only got a one through ten. So you roll that twice for percentile. And uh, yellow, they actually had my favorite color back then. I was transitioning to brown. Anyway, brown's my favorite color. Now, a lot of people look at me and they're like, why? I said, I love earth tones. I, I don't know if you can't see my walls, but my house is mostly earth tones. Soothing, relaxing, and everything else. So like again, this is cheap, well met. I hope that this does kick off a little bit better. Like I said, Loot Crate, sorry to see it go, especially Fallout, especially Firefly, but sweet water and light laughter until next. Chief signing out.